When most people think of ChatGPT, they think of asking a question and getting an answer back instantly. But what if you could make something smarter? Something that doesn't just answer questions, but actually plans what to do, calls tools like a calculator or a search function, and then reflects on its answer before telling you? That's what we mean by an agentic AI, an AI that doesn't just respond, but acts. In today's tutorial, we're going to build a from scratch agentic AI in Python. This is not just a coding exercise, it's a practical framework you can extend into your own assistants, automation scripts, or even game characters. We'll start simple. Our agent will propose a challenging question, solve it using reasoning and optional tool calls, and give a polished answer. Along the way, you'll learn about safe API key handling, OpenAI's function calling, memory buffers, and scalable project structure. We'll be using Python 3.10+, plus, the OpenAI SDK, and Python.nv. You don't need to know everything about AI to follow along. I'll explain each concept as we go. By the end, you'll not only understand how to run this project, but also how to extend it with your own custom tools. Before we write any code, we need to decide where everything will live. Many beginners start with a single .py file, and that's fine for quick experiments, but it quickly becomes messy as your project grows. That's why we're creating a clean, modular folder structure from the start. In our src slash folder, we'll put all our Python code. Inside src tools, we'll keep small, self-contained Python scripts that add abilities to our agent. For example, a safe math evaluator. The src slash agent slash folder will contain the brain of our AI, the logic that handles planning tool calling and producing answers. We'll also have a config.py file for loading settings like API keys and a run demo.py script to run our agent. This separation makes it incredibly easy to grow the project. If you want to add a Wikipedia search tool, drop it in tools slash. If you want to make your agent store conversation history to disk, you'll add that in agent core py. Professional developers structure code this way because it's easier to test, maintain, and share. The source code for this project is available on our GitHub. You can find the link in the description of this video. Now let's handle dependencies. Instead of using a plain requirements.txt file, we're going with the modern pyproject.toml format. This file not only declares what libraries we need, but also describes our project for package managers. That's especially useful if you ever publish your code or work with others. In pyproject.toml, we specify our Python version requirement, project metadata, and dependencies. Python.nv for environment variable handling and OpenAI for making API calls. We also include a configuration for rough, a fast Python linter, which helps keep the code neat and consistent. A good tip here, always specify minimum versions for your dependencies, like OpenAI greater than or equal to 1.40.0. This ensures that you're using a version that supports all the features in your code, but still lets you upgrade later. This habit saves you from a lot of it works on my machine issues. Security is important when working with APIs. You should never put your API keys directly in your Python code, especially if you're going to share it on GitHub. Instead, we use a .env file that contains our sensitive values and load them into the program at runtime. The .env example file is just a template that shows what variables you need to set without revealing your real keys. In our .env example, we include OpenAI API key and also three model selection variables, one for the main model, one for a faster model, and one for a tiny, very fast model. This makes it easy to switch between high quality, low latency, and ultra cheap calls without changing any code. 
just edit the .env file and restart the program. The best practice is to add .env to your .gettingyour so it never gets pushed to GitHub. If your key is ever leaked, even once, you should consider it compromised and replace it immediately. This file is all about configuration management. At the very top, we use .env to load our .env file so all those environment variables become available to Python. We then wrap the settings in a data class called settings, which keeps everything neatly organized and type safe. If the API key isn't found, we immediately raise an error. This is called failing fast, and it's a good habit. It stops the program before it can run into confusing errors later. The make client function returns an open AI client object, which we'll use to talk to the API. Even though the OpenAI SDK can read the API key automatically from the environment, creating a client explicitly makes your code easier to test and more flexible if you ever need multiple clients with different settings. This is our first example of giving the agent a tool. Think of tools as little Python functions that the agent can call when it needs help. This one, Evaluate Math, is a safe math evaluator. It can run simple arithmetic, take square roots, or compute factorials. We use a type dict to define the input schema, basically a contract that says, if you want to use this tool, here's the data format you must give me. This is important because OpenAI's function calling feature needs a JSON schema to understand how to call your tool. In the eval mode, we strictly limit the allowed characters to digits and basic math symbols. This prevents dangerous code from being executed. In real-world apps, you'd use a proper math parser library for extra safety, but this is enough for our example. The key takeaway is that tools extend your AI's abilities beyond just text generation. This is where our agent's brain lives. The agent class manages tools, memory, and the logic for proposing and solving questions. The memory here is very simple, just a list of recent conversation turns, but even this small feature makes the agent more coherent. The proposed question method uses our fast model to generate a difficult question. We use a prompt that specifically instructs the model to output only the question text, no explanations or answers. This is a small but important detail. When you want precise output, be explicit in your instructions. The solve method is more interesting. First, it builds a system message to set the assistant's role, a precise problem solver that uses tools when arithmetic is needed. We pass in our tool definitions using OpenAI's function calling feature. If the model decides to call a tool, we execute it, add the result to the conversation, and then ask the model again for the final answer. If no tool is needed, we use the model's first response. This pattern, plan, act, reflect, is at the core of agentic AI systems. The agent class is the central brain of our system. It's responsible for orchestrating the conversation, deciding when to use external tools, and keeping track of what's already been said. You can think of it as the conductor in an orchestra. It doesn't play the instruments itself, but it decides which section should play and when. Inside the class, we store three important things. The open AI client and settings, so the agent knows how to talk to the models. A registry of available tools, so it knows what actions it can take. And a small memory buffer, so it remembers the recent conversation. Even though our memory is just a list of message dictionaries right now, this tiny feature already makes the AI more coherent because it allows each new step to be informed by the previous ones. The propose question method is where the agent starts its reasoning journey. Here, we use our fast model to generate a challenging question. The reason we pick a smaller, cheaper model is that this step doesn't require deep reasoning power. It's just a creative prompt. The real trick here is in how we write the instructions. We explicitly tell the model 
to output only the question text with no explanations or answers. This might seem like a small thing, but in prompt engineering, specificity is key. Without that instruction, the model might produce extra fluff or even give away the answer. Being clear and restrictive in your prompts is one of the simplest and most effective ways to improve AI reliability. The solve method is where things get interesting. This is where the agent takes the question and decides how to respond. First, it sends a system message that defines the assistant's role. In our case, a precise problem solver that uses tools when arithmetic is needed. This is crucial because it sets the behavioral boundaries for the model. Next, we pass in the list of tool definitions using OpenAI's function calling feature. This tells the model exactly which tools exist, what they're called, what they do, and what arguments they accept. If the model decides that one of these tools can help solve the problem, it will respond with a tool call instead of a direct answer. We then execute that tool in Python, capture the output, and feed it back into the conversation. Finally, we give the model another chance to produce the final answer, now informed by the tool's result. If the model doesn't think a tool is needed, we skip straight to using its first response. Either way, the pattern here is the same. Plan, act, reflect. First, the agent plans its approach. Then it acts, possibly by calling a tool. Finally, it reflects on the result and produces a concise, polished answer. This loop is the foundation of agentic AI systems, and you'll see variations of it everywhere in modern AI tooling. The beauty is that once the structure is in place, you can add more tools, extend the memory, or even introduce multi-step planning without changing the core logic. This is the script you'll actually run. It loads settings, creates the OpenAI client, and initializes the agent. Then it goes through two phases. First, asking the agent to propose a question, and second, asking it to solve that question. I use the rich library here for colored output in the terminal, but it's optional. The key thing is that this script shows the agent in action. If you're making a video, this is where you can pause after the question and challenge your viewers to solve it themselves before revealing the AI's answer. And there you have it, a fully working, from scratch, agentic AI in Python. We didn't just build a script, we built a framework that can think, act, and adapt. Along the way, you saw how to securely manage API keys, design a clean project structure, define and register safe tools, and use OpenAI's function calling to give our AI real-world capabilities. We also explored how even a simple memory system makes responses more coherent, and how the plan-act-reflect loop is at the core of almost every modern AI agent. The best part is that this is just the foundation. You can now add your own tools, maybe a web searcher, a data visualizer, or an API that hooks into your own systems. You can extend the memory so the agent remembers past conversations for days or weeks, or you can experiment with different models to find the perfect balance between cost, speed, and accuracy. If you've been following along, you now have the building blocks to create your own custom AI assistants. Keep experimenting, keep adding capabilities, and most importantly, keep your tools safe, your prompts clear, and your design modular. That way, your AI will always be ready to grow into something even more powerful. If you found this tutorial helpful, give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend who's into AI, and don't forget to subscribe to Brain Omega for more in-depth AI and coding tutorials. Hit the bell icon so you never miss a future project. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.